Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree $2 rustic cathedral window. Of course, it's not a cathedral window. We're going to make it with these fences. Um, and it's not exactly a cathedral window. I took the easy route out. And we're just going to use our glue gun as well as Gorilla Glue Sticks. I was gifted some Gorilla Glue Sticks, but they sell them at Walmart for just a couple of bucks. And they really do make a difference. Um, you're also just going to need a scissor. I've tried different kinds of scissors. I just find my regular scissor to work for me. But you do what works for you. Um, we've done a project with this in the past, and I've said I always find it easier to cut from the back. I don't know why. But for this one, um, the design that I wanted, I just wanted a uh, three pane columns and two panes high of the regular fence. So I'm going to cut a three section. I'm going to cut off the remaining fourth section over there. And then we're going to cut all the insides out, all those little swirls and stuff. But don't just chop at them because we're going to use the um, the center upright swirly things to make the cathedral parts of the window. Now, um, I've been wanting one of these for a very long time, and other than cutting it out of real wood, buying it in the store, or making it out of foam board, I couldn't really find a way to make it on a budget the way I would like it to get the look I sort of was after. Um, and this, this is pretty close. This isn't exactly how I would love to have it. I would love to have a wooden frame on it with this, with this wrought iron in the middle, but that might be an option someday, okay? So I also want to say that this um, would be best if you could spend like $12 on it. But if you could spend $12 on it, um, you just go buy one for $12 with a coupon at Hobby Lobby. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to do it, obviously, as inexpensive, as easy as possible. Um, if you break or cut through the base pieces that you're going to need to keep, that's okay. We'll be able to glue them later. I'll show you a little tip uh, for how to glue these so that you don't see the glue on the front side. Because um, I did have a little bit of difficulty and I cracked one piece and accidentally cut through another piece. Um, but I was able to fix them, no problem. All right. So we're going to do this for um, two of the racks. Now, my tip that I found... Um, was that the one side uh, of the garden gate holds the pins to connect to the hinges. That's what I'm going to call them. Um, so you, what you do is you connect the pins to the hinges on the actual garden gate. And since you have to cut those off, if you have a choice, I would prefer to cut off the hinges. The, pins pl the plastic on the pin side is a little harder. So if you have uh, difficulty with grips... Um, this project is not great for my arthritis, but I did it. <laughs> I did it! Um, yeah, <laughs> so you might want to choose to do that. If you do make it uh, four panes wide and three, uh, and three, you know, uh, fences high to make it bigger, then obviously you'll have to cut off both ends anyway. So once I have that one cut off, that's what it looks like. And then we're going to repeat the same to the other side, except a little different. Because for this one, we're going to cut the top top arches off of the fence as well. And what I decided to do was do it right where it connected to the middle uh, filigree areas. Okay? Um, yes, the fancy word of filigree, right? Um, so you can see here. And then it made it much easier to cut those filigrees out also. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the bottom uh, row like look like almost squares the next row is going to be arched and then I'll show you in a minute um, the options about the arching too all right because again I wanted to make this inexpensive and easy um, the combination is really what I was going after um, the actual what a cathedral window looks like is not but I will show you how to achieve that if that's what you, the look that you would prefer okay and as you can see there, I need to take a little arthritis break every once in a while. Um, just make sure that you're careful. You want to make sure that you um, don't overexert your hands. Uh, but honestly, moving them is the best thing for your arthritis. You guys know that to keep your joints going. So this is actually a good project in the long run. But of course, at the time, it sort of is a little bit taxing. But definitely do more than you think you can do, guys. I promise. It makes it worth it in the long run. All right. 
because the scissors were bothering me, I took out my straight edge, my craft, not craft knife, the utility knife. But I wanted to show you as well that that is an option. If you prefer a utility knife, um, it definitely cuts through here really well. Um, try to just keep your lines as straight as possible. It's hard because the where the wrought, where the wrought iron pieces connect, um, it doesn't lay like a flat tube anymore. Um, but it's okay because it's it looks good on the wall and and you can hide that we're gonna hide that a little bit with paint okay so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna glue the uh, two at the two sections together um, from the wrong sides um, we're going to uh, there's one actually where one of the stakes in the ground was that actually uh, when we cut it the tube and I say tube because these things are like thin, like almost like they're tubes, half a tubes on there. Where one of the edges of the tube was removed, that the um, piece of the bottom frame actually fit in really nicely. And we were able to glue that down. Um, but then what I did was I just uh, repeated that on all four sides. So if I needed to remove some of the material... I could, but I just basically took the glue and I glued it uh, right up to it. I basically butted them up to each other. Um, and you would think that you could see a lot of glue on the other side, but you really can't um, if you're careful. Um, the other thing was I ended up going back. I trimmed little pieces of the leftovers. Yeah, the glue, glue oozed out. <laughs> I trimmed little pieces of the leftover plastic pieces. And I made them as like little bridges. So um, a lot of people use the popsicle sticks in projects when they make like windows and stuff. Do you guys know what I'm saying? So they're like cross braces across the back to assist in the um, strength of it. And we're going to do that with little pieces that I've cut off of, um, off of basically the remnants. So we just took like a tiny little piece of tube. I cut it off and um, I just used it as a bridge like there. I just added some glue glued the piece to the back and basically went a ton of glue and then just put the bridge on there and that just helped it really did um, it made it stronger it made um, a better glue surface um, and I recommend that part now the two middle pieces I did first because there were the shorter ones for me because of the way that the arch was uh, meeting in the middle so what I did was I did those and then I made sure that it was lined up and I, I had to trim both of the outside edges. So that might be an option if you have to do that. Um, just be careful. I would trim a little bit at a time so that you don't over trim. All right. And I'm just going to repeat the same process with the little piece of plastic. Um, I think that this would look absolutely 100% the best if you were able to make two of these and like sandwich them together. So you'd have like a front and back. That would look so cool. Sorry, I just got, I just, that just popped into my head this very second. <laughs> I had to share it with you. <laughs> um, so you can see here, that's a, that's a close up for you guys of how I just took another little piece that was going to go into the trash and just glued it across the back like a bridge. All right. Now, as far as the arches are concerned, um, we're going to use the leftover pieces, the middle pieces that we cut out. And we're going to create the long pieces to create the arches. Now I'm showing you here how um, you basically trim the pieces at the angle that you need them. And again, it's sort of like trim a little bit. You could also put the piece down, take a white chalk marker or white chalk, and you can trace the actual angle that you need um, to get the actual shape. But I wanted to show you here that you could cut the round pieces out of the top and create the actual arch part like that the cathedral windows actually have. What cathedral windows are, they're supposed to be these long pieces of uh, lead glass, uh, leading for the glass that go directly um, from the, the upright pieces straight on to make create those points at the top. But that's why this is like a faux cathedral window. That's why cathedral's in, in quotation marks. Um, but I just want to do to to utilize those curves and just to go ahead and continue on with the um, the two peaks at the top. Um, basically, this is just the look that I was going after. But I showed you there how you could achieve that other look um, by just basically cutting off the loops and continuing with the 
with the arches. That would look really cool as well. Um, so what I've done was I've created, uh, I need four of them to, to match the two windows. I'm putting two of the peaks over the three peaks. And then um, when I'm done with them, then I'll cut the top two peaks um, to match. All right. And what I did was I basically cut one and then copied it, f you know, traced it for the next three. Um, then I was able to just go ahead and make sure each one of them is cut to fit the area that it needs to trim as necessary. All right. And then they're just glued together again with that same technique. What I did for the, um, the, the bracing pieces on the curved edges is I took that really thin piece of plastic. Uh, every once in a while when you cut around where they're attached, you get this really thin piece left over. And I actually filled in the, the space um, in the tube with a little thin piece of that plastic. All right. And I repeated that to all of the arches. Then I was able to make the top arch. Um, I'm sorry I don't have a tall enough camera boom for you to get the large size of this. No, I don't want a camera boom. I have no place to put it. <laughs> but I'm just saying, um, I'm doing the best that I can is what I'm saying. Okay. So we're going to repeat the same thing with the um, last top arch. Um, so what I was, as I was mentioning before, um, do you see how we've created these sort of peaky sort of arches that have sort of a little peak at the top? Um, to get the actual look of an actual uh, stained glass window, I mean, I'm sorry, of an actual cathedral window, you wouldn't uh, want to keep those round um, edges. You want to be able to cut those off and create peaks at those points as well. Um, so just to keep that in mind, if that's something that you're interested in, okay? Um, basically, the cathedral window would be those, those two uprights um, meeting at a point instead of an arch, okay? So I'm just embracing what I have, and I'm going for it. All right, and then repeat the same thing at the very, very top. But you can kind of see the look as I put the top piece on. So the top piece looks like the two side pieces from the two different next lower arches create, um, keep continue and go into one, create one more peak at the top. All right, but again, this isn't exactly like what a cathedral window would look like. I just wanted to get that look easy and for less expensive. All right. So when you see when you turn it over, it does actually look pretty. I think it looks pretty nice. Um, so now what I'm doing is I'm taking the Gorilla, the hot Gorilla glue, and I'm reinforcing all of the seams on the right side. And then I'm also filling in if there's any holes or spaces that were left imperfections because we're going to go ahead and spray paint this. This is just an option. I thought it would be better to give it more of a uniform feel. Um, we're using two different fences and you know, they're not exactly the same color either. Plus, we're going to cover up all of those glue that we just, glue areas that we just created um, and make them black um, as well. So when you spray paint outside, if it happens to be windy, make sure you have the wind to your back. Not only will the spray paint will not go back in your face, but it also, uh, you know, actually go on to the thing that you're painting. That's important. Okay. So once it's dry, you can see it looks good, just black. I just wanted to go ahead and put... This is dry brush, no joke. I literally just painted something and the brush was left over. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Um, I just am running my, this is white uh, Waverly chalk paint that was on the brush. Um, just uh, wiping it over all of the highlights and the edges. And because that's the look that I wanted to go for, honestly. Um, I think I might dip it in the cap. Don't tell anybody. Shh. Um, because, I, you know, it wasn't quite enough. But anyway, I thought that this would also enhance that uniform look of um, that an aged window as opposed to just a piece of wrought iron fence. Okay? Um, and you can do as little or much of this as you want. All right? And that's it. Um, I just hung this directly onto the hook on the wall, but you could go put a hanger on if you want to. I also really wanted to hang a wreath on the top of it, um, on front of it. So we'll get to that maybe someday. Um, but I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in seeing how to make this 
or anything like it. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe, and when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!